Okay, so how practical actually is it to own a Tesla when you're just doing everyday things like going to Tesco's and dropping glass off at the recycling center? Well, today we're going to go to Tesco's and drop glass off at the recycling center and I shall just document this experience. We start off right now with 69% brilliant and at the end of the video, we'll see how much charge we've used. The very first thing we need to do is drop off this glass at the recycling center. Now you will notice that it's in the back seat. You don't want Ming and glass in the back seat of your Tesla. Well, that's because although there's quite a lot of boot space in the Tesla Model 3, this gap because it's a sedan car is actually quite narrow so a lot of things like this box they just don't fit in it and you don't want to risk putting this on the side in case everything falls out anyway let's go get rid of this glass is that brown? green it's gonna look like i haven't helped you at all this <laughs> mission accomplished hand sanitizer used Navigate to Tesco. Wait for it, wait for it, wait for it. And then you have to pick which Tesco. We'll go for the one a mile away, I think. All right, so it says that we will get there with 68% charge, which is how much charge we've currently got. Six minute journey. I reckon we'll use autopilot for as much of the journey as we can just to see. Also, I've never used the voice commands for that, but I thought it'd be fancy for the video. Normally I just click Tesco because that's the only place that we've traveled to for the last six weeks. <laughs> All right, and we're off. So while we've been stuck inside, the uh, traffic visualization things have gotten a lot more accurate. So little things like arrows just really show up a lot more clearly. So hopefully we'll spot a few over the course of this episode. So for example, that's new. It just shows the end of the road. Previously, we've not had those junction lines. Okay, so we can nip out and then we should be able to activate autopilot now. We're restricted down to 30 miles an hour as that is the speed limit which I would always go and follow. We can see the car turning to go around this little bit and we're following this car at a safe distance so this car's braking so we'll see how the car gets on. Oh it did that really nicely. It sort of it didn't spend too long behind that was a that did a really good job. We'll see what it does here though because there are yeah so it's, it's coming to a perfect stop but now it's not gonna pull out. I'm gonna have to exit autopilot and pull out myself. I'm not sure autopilot's ever gonna be clever enough to pull out in th those situations and overtake when it's safe to do so, when a car further down the road's letting you out. Anyway, let's put autopilot back on. See how it gets on here, because this car's quite in the middle of the road. I'm not gonna take the risk, but I think we would've been fine. Okay, everything absolutely fine here. And we're approaching some traffic lights, so we shall be able to see the traffic lights displayed on the screen. Will this bin show up? The bin did show up. I love when the bins show up. Right, which lanes are gonna put us into? Okay, it was going very quickly there and currently it does not stop at traffic lights, but it does see them. Oh, look at the lady going past. How exciting. Okay, we can pull over and now whack autopilot back on. So you saw there that um, autopilot was just going way too quickly. It wasn't planning on stopping at those traffic lights because it doesn't do that yet. And that was quite a tight turn, but autopilot was still doing it at 30, which I, I just think isn't great. There are some new things popping up on the screen as well, but I'll show you them in the car park. Right, which lanes are gonna put us into? The wrong one. So we need to just pull over. The one time we wanted to be in the right lane, autopilot put us into the left lane for some reason. Right, where's that ambulance at? Okay, ambulance is there, so we don't need to worry about it. Let's watch how soon this red light changes. So Becky, you say when it changes on there, I'll say when it changes in real life, okay? Right, I've got this. So, green. Green. <laughs> that was still a bit delayed. Were you a bit late or did you? Did you about, know? about, about right. Oh, nice. It does update really quickly. So in America, the car will now stop at red traffic lights and it'll go on green traffic lights, but we're not legally allowed to do that here in the UK just yet. But look at this, we have successfully made it to Tesco's and what a journey it has been. Only one of us is currently allowed to go into the supermarket and today that is Becky, because I did it last time. See that arrow? We should see that arrow nicely on the um, the road there. The arrows, are, I'm really, really impressed with. There's more. Yeah, there's more arrows coming up, so let's see if they pop up. Yeah, they do and they're really, really accurate. Um, there's three cones as well, so we should see those. Go over this speed bump. Yep, they pop up beautifully. There we are, we've made it to Tesco's, and although my visibility of the, the bonnet is pretty minimal from the driver's seat, I can see that I'm a safe distance from that pole in front because of the uh, the little radar things, which is really handy. Put the car into park. Now Becky has to go shopping, <laughs> and I get to sit here and I'll watch YouTube and stuff. There she is, look. Bye, Becky. She's got her bags, bags for life, and she's ready to go. We'll never forget you, Becky. You have a good one now. <laughs>
Right. <laughs> so while we're waiting for Becky, another very useful and practical feature of the Tesla is our sentry mode. So the last time I was at Tesco's, when I got back in, I had a sentry mode notification. So now if we click up here on the sentry mode icon and launch viewer, we can watch live footage from within the car. So you can see this is from the 3rd of May, which is exactly seven days ago. And something happened within this 10 minute, 49 second clip that the car thought was worth recording. Now, the first thing I'll say is that I think that all of the cameras are really impressive. Like you can see that they're all very, very high quality, high frame rate. So that's really, really useful if someone had keyed your car or bumped your car with their car door or perhaps they were thinking about breaking into the car but then they decided not to when they saw that they were being filmed but a slight drawback is that this has been on for 50 seconds now and you'll see that nothing really interesting's happened like we can see a guy walking past so i don't know if perhaps that was what triggered the sentry cam but it doesn't tell you it just gives you a 10 minute long video and it doesn't point out you know the specific moment that something of interest has happened so we're forced to just skim through this and you just see cars moving around everything's pretty normal we can view the the rear view camera as well i do like how you can scrub through all of this as it's happening so we can see another person moving around over there but the only thing i think of value in this clip is that right towards the end wait for it wait for it it was that little fella that's actually me which uh, it's not the most flattering angle I'll, I'll be honest but that's the only time in this 10 minute clip where someone actually gets close to the car and it's literally just me coming back with my shopping and then it, it, it skips back to here for some reason back to two minutes in and i'm not really sure why it's done that so yeah sentry cam is very useful from the point of view of insurance claims and that sort of thing but there is still room for improvement rather than just getting a 10 minute long clip to look at i think when you launch the viewer it should specifically scrub to this part of the video when an incident happened and automatically put you onto the right camera as well well, I suppose it's time for beach buggy racing. One player, please. Let's go with the guy with a hat for a change. So I don't make a habit of playing beach buggy racing in Tesco car park. But what I will say is that the arcade is a really handy feature if you have kids in the car and you have to pull over on road trips or you have to stop to charge. This is a nice thing to fill in the time. Although sometimes that happens and it just doesn't rotate for you. <laughs> Brilliant. This is a... Uh... It's not going great, if I'm honest. So yeah, there's definitely room for improvement here. And you can't turn it down. Like, I, I would like to have this a bit quieter while I'm filming, but this volume stick doesn't do anything. Whoa, that was unreal. Oh, uh, whatever. It's a stupid game anyway. How do I get off this rubbish get away leave get out of here we're just gonna sit here in silence until she gets back also in a previous video we named our car patsy as part of a monty python easter egg which does this Bring, mm. brings a big old farting foot down on the screen but what i didn't show is that easter egg also unlocks monty python in the theater okay so it looks like specifically what it does is it just automatically searches monty python on youtube for you so this is the same as my youtube app you can see that i'm already signed in up here but yeah if you don't know monty python is an old school british comedy group they did a few films and a few sketch shows on tv why have i got my seatbelt on again when did that when did that happen while waiting i might as well answer a few questions that i've got about tesla's that i've not discussed yet so a lot of people keep asking me how the 4g works because you just saw that i went on youtube and i can watch youtube videos i can watch netflix even though i'm not connected to wi-fi right now i'm just in a car park basically like a smartphone the car has 4g or i don't know if it's 4g or specifically 3g or what it's got that built in so you don't need to get a sim card or anything but what i will say is that you get that premium connectivity for free for the first six months that you have the car but after that if you want to keep the ability to watch youtube view live traffic updates on the navigation then you do actually need to pay 9.99 a month now over time 9.99 does work out quite expensive Particularly for me, who's not in the car loads because I don't drive to work in it every day. So I guess it's up to you to determine whether or not you think that £9.99 is worth paying. Obviously, if you don't pay, you can still connect your phone via Bluetooth and you can listen to music from your phone's 4G and that sort of thing. Now, when we're going about listening to music, the car defaults to having Spotify installed. So we didn't have Spotify prior to purchasing the car. But because Spotify is basically what Tesla direct you to, I now have a premium Spotify account. So I had three months free, but now that's another £9.99 a month now once again if you already pay for apple music or amazon music on your phone you could just connect your phone to the car and listen to music through that and save yourself the spotify subscription but it's just whether the convenience of just having spotify available on the big screen is worth it or not for you but just a couple of expenses which i didn't even think about i assumed that it would all just be included to be honest but it isn't and now it's another 20 quid a month but that's it there aren't any other expenses and i'm sure even with that 20 quid a month it's still cheaper than having a petrol car if you use your car a lot i won't go into warranties and servicing too much but 
I believe Teslas don't need servicing at all for the first two years. And if the car's brand new, it has an automatic four year or 50,000 miles, whichever comes sooner, warranty. So that means that if anything needs fixing, Tesla will pay for it for you. You don't have to pay anything. You just have to get it to the Tesla service center. And then I think that the batteries also have an eight year warranty. But if you are seriously considering buying one, you're probably gonna wanna look into that more yourself. Oh, hang on. I just got a text message from Becky saying that she is at the checkout. So make sure we don't miss her. Get the rear view camera on. <laughs> I'm not having anyone startle me. But yeah, you see. Whoa, did you see that pigeon? Editor Becky, can we get a replay of that, please? Unbelievable. But yeah, you can see what I mean about earlier, how this is just a really nice, high quality, high frame rate camera. I mean, that's got to be at least 30 FPS. So the cameras are just brilliant for identifying people and cars during insurance claims and those sort of things. So a slight improvement for this review camera, it'd be handy to have an option to be able to see it while you're driving. Now, if I put the car into drive, you can literally see it while you're driving, but you can't do any navigation. And because the rear view mirror, in my opinion, is quite limited, I feel like it'd be handy to have the navigation map up here and then a view of the camera, perhaps at this portion, or maybe Maybe a smaller version of the camera over on this side of the car just for extra visibility and if we're going to reverse i feel like when you're in reverse you should get one of those 360 360- oh look it's becky forget whatever i was going on about there she is <laughs> all right should we get everything inside <laughs> so i just want to document that there is loads of boot space obviously we've mentioned this small gap but this is a full weekly shop and everything fits in really well. We could get twice as many bags in there. And if we needed it, there's the extra room under there as well. What I will mention though, is obviously we know there's extra storage in the front of the car, but for shopping purposes, it's not really very practical because this isn't a large space. We wouldn't be able to get our shopping in there. And you can't open it with a button from the outside like you can with the boot. You have to actually open it within the Tesla app or you have to open it from the screen inside. All right, I'm told it was a lovely successful trip. Um, I wouldn't gonna... say lovely, but... I'm told it was a successful trip. <laughs> I had a great time. I watched some YouTube, but we're done. One thing I want to point out is, Becky, do you see those black boulevard, st I don't know what you'd call them, pillars, sticks, <sighs> things, you, see, you know, the, the things on the path? Yes. What would you call them? Pillars. Pillars. Well, pillars now show up really nicely on the driver visualization. So hopefully we should see some before we leave the car park. This is a recent update that's happened since we've been in lockdown. So reverse out nice and carefully. All right. Oh, apparently we are in that car, which isn't great. <laughs> but if you look over on our right, there's those pillars. Do you see them? Look at the pillars. And I'll go down here because I can do that. It should be pillar galore. Look at all of those pillars. Isn't that the most marvelous thing you've ever seen? And then you can see the end of the junction. Zebra crossings don't yet show up, which I don't quite understand why but look at how perfect that looks i mean it's whacked a wheelie bin there but people show up on the map way better which i'm really impressed with all right look at all the cones as well oh it's absolutely fantastic look at the arrows there's bins that aren't actually there but it's still cool anyway we've got junction lines there's arrows <laughs> okay i'm gonna go down this way because this is definitely more of a challenge for autopilot just because of all of the parked cars whack on autopilot so it's going to bring us up to the speed limit because we we're only going 20 so we're now going 30 and um, that taxi can get past just fine but we've got cars up here that are parked technically on the road so i'm assuming it's just going to stop okay not quite sure what it was going to do <laughs> it didn't seem like it was going to stop there did it no it did warn you that we were going to die though it warned me we were going to die which was nice of it but yeah autopilot is just not optimized for these kind of roads at all i mean there's not even lanes on this bit of the road autopilot at the minute is perfect and really really reliable when you're on the motorway but when it's safe to do so we like to test it on these kind of roads just to see what it is currently capable of got the traffic lights which should show up nicely and we can zoom past before they change Okay, we'll turn autopilot back on here. So this is a 30 zone, but sometimes it reduces it down to 20 because there's a school up here and autopilot reduces it down to 20 itself. So we're heading to a speed bump now at 30 miles an hour. So I think when we hit the speed bump, what normally happens is, well, let's just see. <laughs> yeah, so it hit it at 30, but it's now because of the speed bump reduced the speed to 20 just to go to a safer speed which yeah i mean you can go over those speed bumps at 30 they're fairly chilled out speed bumps but now it's going to keep us on 20 miles an hour i assume indefinitely there's no one behind us currently so i suppose we'll just wait and see is it going to speed us back up to 30 automatically or am i going to have to oh it has i didn't think it would do that 
but we are coming to these traffic lights which are on red so i'm going to reduce the speed down myself and we'll just see which lane it puts us in if we can go at it at a safe speed see it's putting us into the right lane so we want to be in the left lane the arrows are showed really nicely changing to green and then through we go i'm really impressed with all these driver visualizations i think they look great keep your eye out for wheelie bins becky we're not out very much becky i'd like to see them <laughs> So we can't turn autopilot on in this residential spot because there, once again, there are no lanes or anything. Another junction line. Junction line's always good to see. I guess that just shows that eventually it will stop at those junction lines. But obviously, I suppose seeing junction lines, pillars, cones, and, and wheelie bins, that's a lot of fun. But we also saw that I had to take over because my car was about to crash us into another vehicle. So there's still definitely lots and lots of room for improvements with autopilot. Okay, we return back to our faithful car park. It has been a successful trip. And yeah, that's what it's like having a Tesla when you're just doing everyday stuff. And now we land, we put it into park. We land. <laughs> so thank you very much for watching. I'm going to turn my seat down because my ass is boiling. If you enjoyed this video, please do click that like button. It might just be me, but I think these videos, uh, there is something interesting about them. So hopefully you did enjoy them as well. If you did, we upload at least once a week. So do consider subscribing. Restrictions in the UK have been lifted ever so slightly. So if there's anything else you want to see us do with the car, let me know in the comments. Thank you. And I will see you later. Now, before the video ends, I want to give a quick shout out to Chill Blast. So previously, Becky edited all of these videos on my really old laptop. And it was a bit of a nightmare. But Chill Blast have been very nice and they've given us a little bit of a discount on this brand new epic pc it's got tempered glass and these lovely fancy lights an i7 9700k cpu with eight cores the geforce rtx 2080 super graphics card and a super fast 250 gigabyte ssd if you want to check out this pc great for editing great for gaming as well the link's in the description all right see you later